Hey guys, and welcome to the Igloo today, and today we're going to be covering all the new test live stuff, which have been needed to have since pretty much the beginning of Conan Exiles. So, as a lot of people have been aware for watching this channel, is that they got rid of bows a while ago, and they added this combo setup where everybody hated this combo setup, and they got rid of the long shot. So now, they actually listened... And ever since they hired this new graphic designer and this new animation artist, this has been killer when it comes to the game. I don't know why they haven't hired this person earlier, because this guy actually gives a shit about the game, because everything that has been on point with this new guy. The Halloween event, yes, the server execution was bad. It was very bad on the server side. But the guy's design was fucking beautiful like I, I don't know why like they haven't hired him earlier but honestly with the bow improvements now with the bow improvements that they say for test live the bow light attack combo is gone and it's only fast attack so you can spam finally again like it was prior so that bow builds can actually be very useful yes whenever you're moving your actual aim goes to shit but at the same time, it gives a bow build to have the viable chance to fight in a PvP situation. Even though Spears will rule King still because of how their animation is. Secondly, their heavy attacks are not only just timed, but they're timed the right way. Let me get to this. When I say that they're timed the right way is that you can fire off a power attack instantly. Or you can wait until it, it is at the perfect tension to release and louse the target so that you can actually fire it properly and have the maximum damage effect for your actual bow build. And it gives you a little indicator, ding, when the bow is actually in the ready. That, I do, it's a little loud and the, the, the FOV is a little tight, but... When I say that personally, it's it's really clean. I mean, it personally, it's it, I'm nitpicking at the animation, but the guy who whoever did this animation, it did so much better than the idea from prior with bow builds, and it actually will make a lot of people have a viable bow build in Conan Exiles, especially for Conan Exiles, because like this this is really done, really well done, and it's it, it's beautiful and uh light arrows are completely different snake arrows now do minimal physical damage but they can still stack to 10 poison snake arrows are still going to be viable no matter what because you are able to just puncture these guys no matter what but now it's more viable to have two different or three different types of arrows on your person and it is actually going to be quintessential to be hot swapping. Maybe you want to get max stack of poison. And then when you get that max stack of poison, then you switch to the dragon arrows. And you can do it seamlessly, and you can fire for effect. And that's kind of what everybody has been looking forward to, especially with bow builds. And then, as well as they're going to be switching up gas arrows so that they actually require gas orbs. Because they were a very, very cheap product instead of Icker. So, with that one thing alone, this graphics designer and this animation designer actually made the game better that way when it comes to fighting in PvP. And again, I commend them for that because it'll switch up people's builds. It'll be able to do things. Instead of just the traditional spear build and the traditional, like... Axe build where you just hot swap and you sheath and unsheath the combo. Throwing weapons, I mean, I tried it out, it didn't really work well. I never really liked throwing weapons, and especially because, like, the, ja the javelins, yes, the javelins are nice, but here's the thing though you're not able to recover it once you hit a target. So it's, it's good that you can still recover it if you miss. But if you were, were going to go for the javelin type of game, like, and you really want it to have, you should be able to retrieve it from the person, like in Rust. You should be able to look down and retrieve that thing that's sticking out of your leg and everything else. Yes, there it is an improvement, but it's something like that on top of everything else. 
All right, let's get down to it with this katana thing. Honestly, this katana, the animations are good, but it's probably not going to be used in PvP. Uh, I say that because the, the heavy attack is not a heavy attack. It's literally getting ready to have the sheath position and then to slice it out rather than to actually use a combo. I like that they're going a different direction with this katana, but again, like it's a it's little too weird especially in a pvp situation like if you're versusing a spear build and you don't have hyper armor versusing it like a katana the spear's gonna win nine times out of ten it's just that simple you have hyper armor you can tank through it why do i need to use this katana that is a little bit longer than a normal katana and it behaves like a shuriken with a few other combinations and it doesn't really have the swiftness and the movement of the actual katana itself. Especially because you are slicing and dicing. The only time that you have said hyper armor with the katana is when you're actually in stance to do a sweeping motion that would negate almost any kind of particle effect. So you're able to go and fly through enemies with this katana, ignoring hitboxes and everything else, and to cause hitbox damage while you're flying through their hitbox. I can see so many things getting exploited with this, especially going through people's bases with shitty internet. I'm only saying that because I've seen where Conan Exiles has been, I've covered it since launch, and I think that katanas would definitely need to have some form of work to it, especially if they have this effect that is going through with the katana. So then there's also other things that I've been seeing is this claim announcer. I'm not covering dice rolling because again, it's gambling in another way. And I have a very strong stance with gambling in games because my grandma, but with this land claim announcer, I have, I don't really like having a pop-up. So what if you have multiple bases that are just far enough and you're raiding this person's castle base or whatever and you always have to see this is player's base this is player's base this is player's base i don't like that honestly less ui is better ui when it comes to certain things and you can you can do it better but honestly this land claim thing i i don't like it it's great for rp reasons it's great for rp servers but it, it's terrible 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 for actually going from place to place what what about foundation spam like we we still don't know about this uh they, they added a laundry list of fixes especially with dialogue options being able to have uh, di uh players that disappear from the map like explosive hours were doing too much damage on pve servers so people were exploiting that the damage from fire arrows because you give it to a thrall would cause damage to another person's structure and it would just be nutty and then equipping equip, uh the equipping the javelin thing was fixed in test lives so you're still able to do it on stable which is kind of funny because you shouldn't be able to do that and then uh, especially the the timer for the jabal sags was fixed and a few other things with on that there's there, there's so many fixes that it looks like the game's still in early access for on how many fixes. And I'll have the, the amount of fixes that are down below for Test Live. Just for Test Live right now. That there's so many bugs on PC that were fixed. And it's just like, why wasn't this done, like, so long ago? Especially for AI improvements. I mean, most of this, for what I see... He's been NPC fi fixed a bug where NPC Temple of Frost couldn't damage a player upon hiding upon black ice nodes. A bug where skeletons near the sinkhole would lose their masks when killed. Fix a bug where the health bar on the NPC nameplate was being placed separately. Pets and thralls will no longer instantly die from fall damage. These are things that are NPC AI fixes that have been in the system for a long time. And they're finally addressing it on top of that they're finally having a roadmap of things that they fixed. I mean, how long since launch has it been? 
Like, for real. How how long ha has it been since launch where we've been asking for a list of things where they can fix for the community, a TLDR fix, and a bunch of other things? It's It's been so long, but they finally offered it months upon months after release when people yearned for it, people wanted to see the potential for it. And it, it's upsetting that it took them this long, but honestly, between their new animation and also their new graphics designer for all these new animations, it's really spot on. I do give them credit for where credit is due, but at the same time, I, it's, it, I just look at Steam's charts and I see that the, the population is like at 2,000 to 5,000 people. This game can bounce back. If they actually whoop their asses in the shape, and possibly we get a new map on top of everything else, promoting mounts, instead of just having like an RP camel that you can mount on, which we can't mount on yet, but it's in the game files on top of mounting on top of a mammoth. So again, like, it depends on what they're trying to do. The, Joel and a few other people want to be working on this game until like February to like mid next year. And they also have a roadmap of a few other games, including another open-world survival game that they announced on their Q3 announcement on top of everything else. So they have a Conan Exiles multiplayer. They have a Conan Exiles single-player that they're working on as a separate game entity, which they brought onto the Q3. So if you actually are tracking of what Funcom is actually doing as a publisher... You're able to see that their attention is divided amongst other games, especially because it's labeled upon their development process. Now, again, I have no problem with them doing that, and as a business perspective, it's very, very logical to actually make other games because you can't just have one game and then release it out. You you need to have other games, especially because the times that this made their bank, like they would have been in debt. Again, and they would have probably been bankrupt again if Conan Exiles failed initially on top of everything else. But again, this game feels like it's been improved upon improved upon improved upon improved. And we're finally, after like this day, the day one of EA until now, we finally got the game kind of on how everybody wanted. Now, if this game came out like this upon release... And upon, like, day one of EA, we would have probably had a completely different conversation and roadmap because they would have had their shit together. They, a lot of more people would probably be more sponsoring about this game, and a lot more people probably would have been having better ideas, and we would have had better population. But they released the game on Shantytown, on top of everything else. And this is only covering about how single-player fluidity of these movements are completely different experience upon these kind of servers the big thing that people are still having these main issues for especially because of server load and server performance is having this amount of stuff still being broken servers being laggy on top of everything else and this needs to still be addressed if they are able to clean up their record so that whatever other game that they have that they can actually improve upon this. Again, whoever did these designs, thank you. This looks fucking amazing. This is what the community has been asking for. Period. Literally. Over and over again. I, I don't know who screamed in your ear that we finally got the changes to be made. And just take off the two other things for the animations. Just do the louse, the quick one, and the actual power hitter. Great great method to do i i honestly commend you for that but honestly the, the there's so much that's going to be needed if you're going to be keeping the retention literally make another map you have the ability to make another map add mounts to it make it rp and opening up the modding so that anybody can auto download like on arc if you have this stuff you're going to be able to return your profits even more. And the DLC that you're pushing with the Atlantean Sword, the actual Imperial East Pack, the Jewel of the West Pack, the Savage Frontier Pack, more people would buy it because more people are playing your game. 
instead of having a small like investment audience and then you actually have a different map so that people would be like hey this actually looks cool maybe this would go well with the imperial east pack maybe this will go well with the jewel of the west pack maybe if i have this actual thing that we're going to be having for the packs that we already exist being brought to pets and then we have a theme when we're actually riding our pets for mounds on top of everything else again mounds and other things are down the pipeline but the next thing that they're going to be working on is magic on top of everything else. So again, you'll be seeing other things that will be cool about this. So again, one of the big things that I will stress to about anything else. Yes, this is great news. This is very good. But they still have a lot more work to do. And honestly, if they're going this direction and they're not going to fuck up like they've been doing in the past so many times... This would probably be a better direction to where the game is going. I'm optimistic about this, but I'm still going to be playing Fallout 76 on top of everything else because, like, it just needs so much more work. It, it needs the work so that people can come back and join the game and enjoy it's another frame. But here's the problem with an open world game, especially if you play on the same map over and over again. It gets stale. It gets very, very stale playing the same map. You know what's happening. You know that the end game is literally just a rip bracelet animation. You know that this stuff is there. You know that it has different things that are in the pipeline that are going to be needing to get fixed. And this is one of the things where it's a big problem with having just one world. We we get it. We we love the code and we love the lore, especially for it. And there's there's your RP community side, which you have, which everybody has, okay? But then you also have your PvP side. Most official servers will not RP 100%. Especially when VoIP is broken. If VoIP is broken, most people are going to resort to violence and they're going to kill another player. That's just how it is. You're still going to have volcano bases. You're still going to be having other things because people want to dominate. Survive, dominate, survive. Like, it, it's it's in the game. It's bred into the game. Most survival games are like this, including Fallout 76. I only stress that it's not as hard because people are mainly wanting to cooperate with each other because they want to be able to improve. And there's so many penalties towards PvP than anything else because... No matter what, the person can auto-respawn on top of everything else. In Conan Exiles, you have to teleport away from the fight. And to do that, they get things right. Rust does it right when it comes to bets and a timer, right? It, it does it fine. With Conan Exiles, when you die, you have a timer. You have to spawn on a bed somewhere far away or in the desert if you get really screwed. Like, that's fine. I get that. As a survival game, that's how it should be. Like, you should be able to teleport away. There should be a penalty for dying. A penalty for, like, going away, which I completely believe upon. And they are doing these things right. And I have to point out when they do things right Howdy. when it comes to certain situations. Target locking is going to be a big factor on top of everything else, especially if you're on the consoles oh, yeah, and you yeah, see man. this type of patch happen. But of, honestly, there's so too. many fixes that they put into Test oh Live gosh. that I'm very surprised that they did not put out yet, where all I'm these human. big fixes uh, haven't been filtered do. through through minor patches so that people can say, hey, this, this broke. Company, because there's been so many times that Test Live has been broken has been broken multiple times and they just did not fix it and go it through and it would take forever because whenever they fix it on test live it doesn't always go down the stable and normally stable has a problem and this is just me like with maybe 10 minutes about playing into the test live because of i've experienced test live ever since day one of ea if you guys like this content, please like, comment mm. down below, and if you actually are playing Fallout 76, and you actually would like to, like, doing legendaries, I'm working on a build right now that is going to be able to do 6,000 damage per shot, 
and I need to have these pieces of unyielding armor. And if you are into that game, you're playing it right now, leave a, leave a comment, join the Discord. I'm going to put the Discord down below, too, and oh, yeah. probably the message that I'm going to have. So have a good one, guys.